I remember it was in late December 2017. I sat down at the piano, as I often do. The lyrics just started pouring out of me and onto the paper. What I didn't realize was that the Lord was writing a song in me. A prophetic song about a future event that would soon impact the entire world. Once its lyrics started coming to pass, I wondered, why was I given a song like this? I questioned, should I just keep it to myself, or was the Lord wanting me to share it with others? This is me telling the true story behind the writing of the song, Moonlight Bleeds Red. If I look back at 2017, when I sat down and wrote this, our world had never heard of global lockdowns, streets filled with violent riots, declaring hate speech, using our words to divide each other, watching our freedoms, our freedom of speech, our freedom of religion, our freedoms collectively being removed. We didn't really talk about that. And this isn't something that we foresaw coming in 2017. Yet what I find so fascinating is that that's exactly what this song describes. Describes a world in lockdowns. Describes a world that the streets have become bare and empty and are only occupied by violent rioters that are fueled by hate bent on dividing and conquering through words that have become weaponized like a war and where our children are just, they can't be children. Their innocence is stolen from them. Empty streets where children used to play, now riddled with monsters only fueled by hate. Empty streets where children used to play Now riddled with monsters Only fueled by hate I can't help but to think of my childhood. You know, you would be out until the sun went down, and then you knew you just went home. There was just a sense of unspoken safety that we had just a few short decades ago. So much has changed, and um, we have to ask ourselves why. Why has so much changed in just a short time? Why are our children not safe in the same places that they used to be safe? I remember a world where love still mattered. Now silence deafens the land. Why is the love of so many growing cold? Why is there so much hate in the hearts of people? For people they don't even know. When I think of Moonlight Bleeds Red, I think it's describing what the world looks like culturally and as a collective society when truth is removed. There's a chapter in Romans, Romans 1, that said society would reject the truth and continue rejecting the truth. And they would begin to replace it with a lie. And after a while of the rebellion against the truth, God would give them over, hand them over to the very lie because they loved darkness rather than light. We kindle our tongues and with our breath we spark debate as we use our words more like swords to fuel our hate.
When I read the lyrics that the Lord gave me some five plus years ago, I see a post-Christ world, a world where words have become weaponized and are ultimately bent on dividing the people and curating hate in our hearts one for another. I remember a world where truth still mattered. Now protest deafens the land. Why are so many protesting and fighting, in many cases for lies? What has happened? You see so many protests on the streets these days that are protesting lies. They're fighting for lies. Why? Why so much confusion? It's as if our world has gone mad. And I guess in a way it has. Because we are being robbed of the truth. I remember a world where truth still mattered. Now protest deafens the land. What I really see woven in through this song, Moonlight Bleeds Red, is a battle for truth. When truth is completely removed from a culture and from a people, what are we left with? I think of it like this. When we retain the truth, that truth will set us free. But when we remove the truth, it's only a matter of time before we bend the knee to tyranny. When truth isn't spoken, another life gets broken. How did we get here? One of my favorite messages ever spoken was by the late Charles Spurgeon in the 1800s. It was titled Songs in the Night. And in it, he poses this question that I think is so relevant to our generation. He says, it's the easiest thing to sing nicely when everyone around you is singing. But will you still sing when condemned to be burned at the stake for your faith in Christ? For surely a song sung while under pain and penalty would surely show your heart to be in your song. But when the devil puts his hand over your mouth, Will you still sing? And I think that's so perfect, if I can say that, so relevant. It's the easiest thing to stand on truth when everyone around us is standing on truth. But when everybody abandons the truth for a lie and the devil comes and puts his hand over your mouth, and tries to silence you from speaking the truth. Will you still speak the truth? We have to make a choice. Do those few that remain that stand on the truth just wave the white flag of surrender and go silent? Or do we continue to hold the lines and press ahead and fight. Truth is worth fighting for. Why do I write songs? I think songs are a extremely powerful tool. 
that God created for both prophetic purposes as well as to draw us closer to him. We look at the book of Psalms and we see David through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit writing songs that were foretelling of the future. Um, the Psalms are just laid out with all kinds of emotion and we don't even know if King David knew he was writing about the future, but as we look back thousands of years later, we can see he was. The late Charles Spurgeon, he said, go first and foremost to your maker, for he is the great composer of songs and the teacher of music. He will teach you to sing songs, for he is your maker and he giveth you songs in the night. I truly believe that the Lord gave me Moonlight Bleeds Red. I know the word says that God knows the very end from the beginning. So for the Lord to give somebody like me a song foretelling of a time soon to come, it doesn't bother me. It just compels me to dig into why. God places songs in our hearts to speak sometimes warnings. I think we can all agree that we as a world are in a time of warning. We see God is stirring up humanity through different signs and devastations from the blood moons to the great American solar eclipses, the global lockdowns, the violence, the hatred, the wars and the rumors of wars, all this and so much more Jesus told us was going to happen and it's happening. But what he said first and foremost before any sign to look at, he said, do not be deceived. You can't be deceived if you know the truth. Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Isn't that what we're all fighting for anyways? For freedom? If we could envision a world with no division, where his love can rule and reign at last. I'm excited about the true peace that's coming. I'm excited about the true essence of love ruling and reigning on this earth. Do I think there is still hope for America and hope for the world? When I read the scripture, I know how it ends. So I have hope and I don't shrink back underneath what my eyes see because I walk by faith and not by sight. That's what we're supposed to do. What I see at the very end is a one world, unified, peace filled, kingdom, but it's referred to as the millennium, when Christ rules and reigns here on earth for a thousand years. So yes, I do have hope that we will have peace and we will have unity in this world. But what we're witnessing right now is the rising up of a different pseudo peace. We see Satan making in a sense, a last-ditch effort through the hand of wicked world leaders trying to set up a one-world system in place of Christ's kingdom. We know it's going to fail. We know it will last seven years. And sadly, over three-quarters of the world will be destroyed in that time. But... 
Christ will return in the midst of that climactic war, World War III. He will come back with the sword of his word, the truth, and with one breath, he will consume the wickedness and the poverty and the greed, the oppression, the sufferings. They, they will be consumed in a split word by the breath of Christ. That's when we will see peace. That's when the world will join hand in hand in one and sing a song of one accord. That's the truth. Christ is the truth. He's the truth, and he is the only one that can set us free. There's no man or league of nations that can set us free. We cannot look to man to accomplish what only God can do for man. So I'm not looking to our government. I'm not looking to a world system. I'm looking to the God who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's what I'm holding on to. I want to share the truth of how much Christ loves every single one of us. He loves us so much. And he's reaching down to us a lifeline right now, shaking this world, trying to get our attention. You know, he can, he can communicate however he needs to, to an individual, to somebody that's very logical and very mathematical and scientific. He will reach them in that place of their mind through the nature of his creation because he is the creator of math and science and the stars and physics he he's the creator he's the master inventor but for the philosopher for the artist could he not use a song could he not speak through a song a simple message of his love woven in saying, look at what's happening. And why is it happening? It's because you're denying my love. You're denying the truth that I love you and that I so desperately am reaching down and want for you to be saved. What I see through Moonlight Bleeds Red is God giving us a foreshadow of what we already know in Scripture. He is in control. He knows the end from the beginning. And yes, things seem like there is no hope and they're just crumbling all around us like a house built on the sand. But just because the majority might be building their houses on the sand right now, we don't have to. We can continue to be standing on a firm foundation. If the world wants to go the way of a lie, we hold on to the truth. If the world wants to hate, we continue to love. Because that, that is what we're called to do. We are called to sing our songs in the night, in the darkness, when all hope seems lost. Isn't that when the most beautiful melodies can be sung in the silence, in the moments when everybody else is silent? We can be singing the song of truth. Be sure to 
check out the official music video at the links below. And thanks for watching. God bless.